my name is James Bellissimo. I'm the director of the Community Development and Planning Department for the Town of Berwick. This presentation is a little bit about who we are as staff of the department, what we've been up to, and what we're looking forward to doing in the near and to midterm with the town. Our department is effectively made up of three sub-departments, planning and community development, myself with Envision Berwick as a spur off from that, code enforcement, Jen handles code enforcement, building inspecting and plumbing inspecting, and assessing, Karen is our is our day-to-day, -day. she handles data entry questions, Michelle helps with data entry and measuring and listing, same with Mike, and Paul is the office supervisor. So code planning and assessing, some days you'll see that all three of us are in there and it's very active and uh, all of our jobs overlap. And if you wanna come in and say you wanna build a house, your first step is to meet with Jen and I often, we meet together a lot of the times, to determine if the use you wanna do is allowed in the given zone and what type of review is required. So it's either it's allowed, you can do it, go ahead, you might, you might need a permit through Gen. You might need planning board approval. Step two, we review your applications. Once we know that you're allowed to do it in the zone, um, there's either a planning board application or a building per permit application. And we, we, we do work hard to streamline this effort. After you are all approved and permitted, now comes inspections throughout the build out of sites. Gen will go out and make sure that the uh, building meets the plans. And then finally, number four, we get that construction on the tax rolls. That's really what it's all, what it's all about, making sure it's assessed uh, equitably and then uh, it's reviewed periodically. So a little bit more about code and inspections with Jen. Our land use ordinance and comprehensive plan can be perfect, but it's only as useful as it can be enforced. And Jen does an incredible job of just getting things done, getting things resolved. She has a real talent for it and she's an incredible asset to the town. 125 building permits have been issued this year alone, most of them renovations. And to be able to do that while working remote through this COVID times is just incredible to see. Jen handles new uh, construction. She reviews and inspects and permits, renovations, septic, internal plumbing, shoreland zoning. She's also in charge of E911 addressing. So for any driveway that has more than one house on it, so two houses, it requires a street name and coordinating that and making sure everything is updated is quite a task. Lastly, we probably receive just as many complaints as we do building permit requests. And uh, we go through the gamut and the spectrum of, of, of vetting these complaints and violations a lot of disputes and going back to the ordinance and making sure that yes, this is a violation. Yes, the town should be involved or no, this is a civil matter. We don't hesitate. Uh, oftentimes, if, if we don't know the direct answer of going to Steve, going to uh, MMA legal, going to our town attorney um, and just making sure that um, if we ever do go to court, and this is our number one thing, if we ever go to court that we win because we did our due diligence. So um, we have a process and when it comes to resolving these complaints and violations, and we take it very seriously. And as I've mentioned before, we're very interested in streamlining these processes and, and learning what it takes to resolve issues and, and even be proactive to prevent issues into the future. The assessing department has been very active. They helped the town with a complete revaluation to reflect the market values of all the properties in Berwick. And every year there's quarterly inspections. So about 25% of Berwick's properties are reviewed each year to make sure that the market values are still in line to where they should be. Their main project recently has been reviewing farmland and open space programs to make sure that people still qualify. People receive a, a tremendous discount and some properties in town aren't upholding their end of the bargain. And then uh, the, ta the town is also has a file on all commercial businesses. Their equipment is part of property taxes. 
And lastly, um, a, ma a major task for the assessing department is to prepare for tax commitments and audits. Our GIS is still a work in progress, but it's made significant improvements over the years. When I first was employed by the town of Berwick, a lot of the times we had to paste uh, tax maps together, physical paper tax maps with match lines. Now you can go on online now, we have them digitized. And you can scroll in, click on a lot, and it'll, it'll link you to the assessing database. There's so much more that we can do with it, and uh, we're improving it every year. We have a chance to do it. And this is something that assessing and planning work together to keep updated and maintained. The land use ordinance is the primary go-to document for both code and planning. We amend this document one to two times per year and amendments require research, look at data analysis, what other towns are doing. Uh, it takes time to write the ordinance to make sure it fits with what the town needs and wants. And then there's a review process with planning board, uh, community feedback and legal uh, opinions as well. Uh, it is up to planning and code to enforce and administer the land use ordinance this, this means ensuring uh, continued compliance with the ordinance and addressing violations in a timely manner. A lot of our job is, is customer service, interacting with the community. We love the activity in the day-to-day -day in the office with answering questions and just talking about what's possible within the town. These two maps make up the zones in the zoning. And they range from stream protection, which is highly restrictive to our village overlay district, which encourages development. And the zones, they, they change subtly from in between those two extremes. The main mechanism for how the zoning and how the maps work based on the colors you saw are the different zones and those zones are the columns. And within the rows, it's either C, A, P or X C means conditional use or planning board review. A, you can do it without a permit. P is a permit through gen and X is not allowed under any circumstances. And this is why we have amendments. Um, sometimes things are allowed that we don't really think fit anymore or there are things that aren't allowed that we think do actually fit. And there are new categories and definitions that can be created, new performance standards, and, uh, you know, land use is an evolving thing, and, and we try to stay on top of it and stay proactive. Everything you see in the land use ordinance has to have a basis from the comprehensive plan. Otherwise, it doesn't have legal standing. We're undergoing a comprehensive planning effort now, and this effort starts with a survey, getting feedback from the community, inventorying our resources, coming up with plans for our future land use, our economy, housing, age-friendly, downtown, rec master plan, transportation, public facilities, public safety, public works, public utilities, regional coordination, capital improvement plan, how we pay for it all. And lastly, this boils down to goals, policies, and strategies from which that's where Envision Berwick comes in and they make recommendations to the select board and to the broader community how to implement the plan. So to make a good plan, we need to have good data and research and data is something that the, this department handles. We know based off of the school populations, for example, that the school population has been very stable since 1989. And we wanna make sure in the department that the current trends don't create any bubbles, which create extra costs. And within the department, we can really only take the edges off of spurs and growth because what restrictions and regulations mean is we are limiting the availability of options for people's properties. So we also take that very seriously. But with that said, you can see since that the housing recession, the housing crash, our growth numbers are not really close to where they were in the mid 2000s and we don't anticipate the number is really ever getting to that point again with the edge development we're going to see a one-time increase of uh, multifamilies 
which will be really good because we're increasing density. But there, there's not going to be an increase of housing like we have saw because of certain conditions that created that environment for that housing development. One of the challenges for the town is getting a better distribution of property values. Right now we're at 87% residential, which is not uncommon for Maine communities. However, we can be forward thinking and we can improve our commercial industrial share of that of the of the property value and property burden in town and a good percentage or two of that is going to come from the edge development alone and we have other areas route 9 route 4 other areas route 236 that we need to look at a master plan just like we've done for the downtown to get that balance to a place where the burden is just off the residents of the town and we can shift it more to the commercial uses which have a less impact to the resources and services to the town. Also as part of this department, we sit on CACS, which is a Kittery Area Comprehensive Transportation System of Berwick, South Berwick, York, Elliott, and Kittery. The highways, the state highways, they make up a transportation system and one flaw in the system is going to affect the rest of the system. Transportation is truly comprehensive in that nature and complex. So the, these towns come together and they work together to solve um, transportation issues in the region. Here's an example of a CACS project. We're lined up for funding for 2024. Um, it's about a $600,000 project, and this includes sidewalks, improving the circulation of uh, cars, and also pedestrian safety and access as well. This department is also involved with the MS4, which is Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System. We're involved with uh, the similar neighboring towns where in an urban area, when it goes down a catch basin, it goes to piping and it goes into our river. So that runoff from the roof, runoff from the driveway, pet waste, leaves, fertilizer, motor, motor oil, detergents, trash, all of that ends up directly in our river. And because of permitting, with environmental permitting, the town is responsible for improving what goes into the rivers. There's quite a bit of MS4 infrastructure. We've got 100 plus catch basins, piping, and about a dozen outfalls that are inspected and maintained annually. So as part of the MS4 permit, we are required to update outfall number seven, which is at the corner of Moulton Street. It's also gonna be the home of one of the entrances to Great Falls Park. Uh, this outfall is going to capture the water that's coming down Moulton Street and actually is gonna filter it before it hits Salmon Falls River. So it's an exciting project for both environmental and for recreational purposes. Envision Berwick acts as the community and economic development arm of the planning department in, in broader town. This is where you see the germinations of some, of some fantastic ideas that you see around town. This is where brand, the branding comes from. This is where the lawn chairs Sullivan Square concert series came from. We're going to be working on implementing the rec master plan. The phrase in craft brewing is if you can create great beer and create great atmosphere, then you've got to win a combination. I'm fascinated with creating things, whether it's building or cooking. You can just take all this stuff and just create something, and it tastes good. It's 50% luck and 50% knowledge for me. I was born and raised here, and a friend of mine shot me a link to a newspaper article. It just said Berwick, the town beer could save. 97% of people want a brewery. I'm like, what? Was it? Was I confident that it was gonna work? No, not at all. <laughs> you can ask my wife. Grand opening day was a Saturday, and I was sitting right here with my head in my hands, just going, please don't let this fail. <laughs> we opened right at noon. My wife kind of leans over my ear and she goes, don't turn around. I said, why? And I turned to look, 
and within, literally within three minutes, we had a line out to the sidewalk. And then the following day, it was the exact same way. I think people are just starving for change. I can't wait to see when the downtown area of Berwick and the new edge site starts and what happens with us. This type of model has been growing over the last five or six years, the, the community-driven kind of meeting place watering hole. And Berwick's trying to get back to that, just the newer model. So this is basically what's called a, the hot side of a brew house. You take malted barley, you just break it open, you don't crush it. And this is called a mash tun, so we fill this with a water at a certain temperature. Take the grains and you stir them in. This is called a boil kettle. From here down, it's nothing but a giant firebox. But once it's done in here, We'll shoot it through a, a giant radiator behind you and it'll go in just under boiling temperature. We'll run it through here into one of the fermenters. This is its happy home until it's done. And then yeah, once it's in the kegs and cans, we transfer it in here, this is our cold room. Once they're ready, they go up to the tasting room. I think downtown Berwick's gonna change the face of you know what small town can be.